Hello everybody and welcome to another weekly update. My name is Martin. I'm an Inkscape developer developing features and fixes for everyday Inkscape users. Uh, welcome to these updates where I share with you the work that I've managed to do this week on the Inkscape pro project. Um, this week we're going to be looking again at PDF input. Um, but before we get into the de details, I want to give a big shout out and a big th thank you to all of my sp sponsors. Thank you all very much for uh, basically allowing me to work on Inkscape uh, on your behalf. Uh, do keep uh, testing the work that I'm up to and letting me know what you think I should work, work on. Um, it's always interesting to see where Inkscape needs to go in order to meet the expectations of real users. Okay, so let's get into what we have. As you know, for the past few weeks, I've been doing PDF work, and most of the struggle has been trying to get uh, not I mean, I started off doing like shapes, groups, layers, all of that good stuff. But I've been struggling with all of the font stuff for the past few weeks. And uh, I say struggle very de deliberately because it is quite difficult to extract out of a PDF file all of the information necessary to not just uh, show a piece of text as it intended, but also allow you to edit it as text. Um, what I mentioned last week when I when I created the new PDF interface for um, basically being able to show all of the fonts that are inside of a PDF file and allow you to set the strategy by which you want the internal importer to operate. Um, what I've done this week is done that rendering pathway, the one that I said um, that allows you to essentially specify which of the fonts you want to be rendered into a shape. So this is where you, you open up the PDF file. It's using some exotic or proprietary font and or an incomplete font even. And you still want it to look correct in the PDF file. So you select render this to shapes. And um, essentially what you'll end up with is just the shapes. It'll look correct, but it's not editable text. Um, this path pathway was quite an adventure to, to set up, mostly because most of the code theoretically already exists, right? It's already in the in the external Cairo Im importer. So um, I stole a bunch of code, but of course, it's never that easy. Um, and so like importing a chunk of a different pro project in order to do this very specific task uh, came with its own set of challenges. Uh, but I'm very happy with the way that it's worked, especially the fact that when you draw out these shapes, I was expecting some very convoluted hackish type extraction process where I'd have to get these shapes out and maybe there'd be all sorts of translation prob problems. But it turns out once you actually have all of the font stuff worked out, Cairo will give you shapes that you can then put in the SVG relatively easily. So I'm actually quite happy with that, that end part. Um, next up on the docket is to essentially get some of the embedded P, uh, fonts that are inside of a PDF file and actually extract them as files. The idea here is that if you have a complete font inside of your PDF, then you should, what Inkscape should do is basically save that font into a temporary directory so that when you're opening the uh, PDF file, you can then edit it as text, but it still looks co correct because it has access to, to the right font. Uh, this doesn't work for all fonts, especially if you have used a PDF minimizer or size reducer or compressor, because what those do is they basically strip out the fonts and replace them with incomplete, what are known as CD, CID fonts. Um, these have to be re rendered as shapes. There's just really no option once you've compressed the PDF. Um, so like that is an exciting possibility, and I don't think it will be that hard because once you have the, the font files as files, you can just put them into the font config and Inkscape can do, do the rest from there. Uh, one of the actual challenges that I found is that so far, I don't think there's enough information to correctly select which of the font styles you need to use, right? So we have the correct font names, all of that inf information has been resolved, um, but we don't know which of the styles of that font you're using, i.e. Uh, I can tell probably that it's bold or italic, but is it the thin version or the fat version, the oblique version or the small caps version or like some other, you know, v version, custom version of that font? I, d I don't know. And 
the problem is is that I, I need to find a way in the PDF data that's available of distinguishing what uh, font, what style of that font I should use. Uh, that's basically where most of the errors are ha happening in, in the test suite. Um, the fonts that are just normal fonts or bold work fine. Fonts that are using strange styles or like unconventional styles, uh, it, they're just not. The data is just not there. So uh, that's probably going to be a bit, bit of an adventure. Um, but like once this sort of thing is done, you can hopefully have a lot more control over these PDF files. Um, and I'm hoping that the test suite that I'm build, building will actually allow just continued development so we don't end up with this like stalled procedure where like PDF files just end up being um, this fragile part of Inkscape that we don't want to touch because it kind of just works, but not re really. We want it to be robust, right? We, we want programmers to be able to go in with confidence that if they fix a bug or they introduce a new feature, that they don't end up wrecking 10 other things in, in the process. Um, okay, so that's what I have been getting up to. Let's have a look at some of the, the features and fixes from other Inkscape developers, because um, we have a big, big community here in Inkscape. A uh, big shout out to Raphael. Um, he fixed the PDF export markers. This is when you're using a cloned item as a marker. Exporting to PDF would fail to re render that marker. He's fixed that. There are some other bugs that have been identified which are related to, to, to that. Uh, exporting to PDF is also another big issue. Um, Mykov has uh, introduced the horizontal and vertical options in the XML di the dialog. It's an easy way to just switch the way the, X the XML dialog works for you. Uh, Adrian Plazas helped with replacing a royalist symbol that we were using in for the symbols dialog with with the uh, peace symbol. Uh, this is actually my, my own fault. I many years ago picked a symbol at random that looked nice. Uh, but it turns out that it is a right-wing symbol in France, so we have replaced that. So thank you for the merge request. You made it very pain painless. Uh, Nathan Lee has actually been looking after some of the win Windows builds, and we have been talking a lot about how to do uh, the 1.2.2 release, which is due in December 5th. There's a bunch of bug fixes and things that we need to backport in. Uh, we've fixed a few issues. I've actually fixed a few myself. Um, and, and and they get tagged as backport and ported, but those all need to make it in to 1.2.2 so that when you da download it, you get the advantage of some of these fi fix fixes. Like we can't backport features, obviously, but hopefully the fixes will, will, will make it in. Um, so like there is a possibility that 1.3 will be unstable. I hope not, but you never know. But making a 1.2 release more state stable means you always have something to go back to that is more rock solid. A uh, bit of ma ma maintenance never hurts. Um, okay, so thank you all for wa watching this video. Um, please subscribe. Please fo fo follow me on Mastodon. And um, I'll see you all next week.